Hello everyone. For number 33, we're going to take a look at our first um, graphing question where we're actually completing a graph. Um, <clears throat> and that graph is going to be f of x equals the absolute value uh, within the brackets of 3x. So, um, if we just think about transformation-wise, what this graph is going to look like, if we think of our parent absolute function, and absolute value graphs, remember, have that um, V-shape. If this is a horrible straight line, uh, if that's our parent function, the absolute value of x, what is the absolute value of 3x going to look like? Just to give you a kind of, you know, before you start graphing, what you should get, um, this is going to be a horizontal compression. In other words, the graph's going to get more narrow. It's kind of like it's getting pushed in from the sides. So it would look like this in green. Not very precise here, but as you can see, the graph's still going to have that V-shape, but it's going to be uh, slightly more narrow. And now to do this, um, <clears throat> we're going to create a table of values. It's kind of like our work for this question. And let's do it right on the right side, inside here. Okay. So I'm going to graph this function from negative 3 to positive 3. It's going to be vertex, uh, excuse me, it's, its vertex is going to be centered on the origin. So that's why I have 0 in the center. It's not going to be translated left to right, so I don't have to adjust my table in that respect. The math is very simple here. It's not like a quadratic where I'd want to use it, my calculator. I can and we'll type it in and see what it looks like, but we're basically just taking the absolute value of a number, which doesn't amount to much, much calculation. Um, <clears throat> so in y equals, I'm going to hit math num number to get the absolute value function. I'm going to type in 3x, close the parentheses, zoom 6. You can see that's the graph that we should get, and if we want to copy down a quick table, um, we're going to have 9, 6, 3, and then repeat it on the other side with 0 in the center. That makes sense because this would be negative 9. The absolute value of that is positive 9. This would be negative 6. The absolute value positive 6, and so forth. 0 is still 0. Okay. <clears throat> so that's what our table of values looks like. And now we're going to plot the points here. So I'm going to start at 0, 0, 1, 3, and negative 1, 3, um, 2, 6, so 4, 5, 6, and negative 2, 6, and the last one is 3, 9, and on the opposite side, negative 3, 9. Um, now, if you were connecting this, you know, doing this by hand, you would obviously want to use a straight edge here. I'm just going to use the line tool, which should pass through all those points. One thing we want to do as well, um, you will lose points for this. We want to show that this graph is continuing in either direction, so we're going to put arrows on the end. Not necessary to label here. Um, it doesn't hurt. It's not like you would lose points for labeling. Um, you only want to label definitely when there's two graphs, but we can label still, still here. Notice I have straight lines, arrows, clearly defined points. This would be a full credit graph. So now let's scroll down to the kind of side questions on the bottom. I'm going to try to get our graph in the picture there too. If g of x is equal to f of x minus 2, how is this graph translated to form g of x? So this is outside of the function, subtracting 2 from it. So the actual equation of this would be the absolute value of 3x, close, kind of the brackets, and then minus 2. If you know your transformations, this is going to shift it down 2 units. And we can verify on the calculator. This is a vertical transformation, and since it says minus 2, we're going down 2 units. And let's check. 
So I'm going to type in the same function, but then outside of it, I'm going to type in um, minus 2. So we should see our first graph pop up, and then the second one should be below it, two units down, which we clearly see there. Okay, and now <clears throat> if h of x is equal to f of x minus 4, kind of in the parentheses here, how is this graph translated? This is going to be what we call an IHOP rule. IHOP signifying that it's inside the parentheses here. It's going to be a horizontal movement, and it's going to be in the opposite direction. So in other words, minus 4 is going to correspond to actually plus 4, or um, 4 units to the right. So this is going to be a left and right movement, in this case right. This is going to shift the graph 4 units. That's our number here. Shifted four units right. And that's again um, an IHOP rule. We're kind of plugging in, not like vertical over here where we're outside of the brackets. If we're plugging a minus four inside the brackets, inside the parentheses in the function rule, that's an IHOP rule um, where we're moving in the opposite direction. Meaning minus four you would usually think on a number line to the left, but the opposite comes into play when it actually moves to the right. Okay, so as you can see, this is a part three question, multiple parts here. Um, uh, we have a graph, which would probably be worth two points here, depending how the partial credit's broken up, and then we have two little follow-up questions. We clearly indicated which direction they were and how many units um, they were. And this would be a full credit response. Okay, thank you for watching, and hopefully this helped.